Okay, this is video number two in which we're covering the channel view control of the fader unit. Uh, we, we've covered this section already in previous video, and now this video we're going to focus on these six buttons and these a few buttons here. I'll go ahead and explain what they are. We have event on track, event cycle, playing channel, selected channel, expanded channel, and all channel. You notice I've got all channel highlighted right now, so we see on our fader units, we see all of the channels. Now these buttons here are the lock buttons, and I'll quickly explain that. Let's say we had uh, a reason to lock the snare. We always want to access the snare channel very quickly, whether we're scrolling through channels on our fader units or not. We want to see the snare channel. So I would select whatever channel I want to lock, and then I can lock it either to the left or to the right. And so you'll see if I lock it to the left, it shows up right here. And then if, as I scroll through channels, I always have that snare channel on top there. And I can lock as many channels over to the left if I, as I want to. Let's say I wanted the hi-hat locked over there as well. Now I can always see my snare and my hi-hat channels. Now with my fader units linked here, I can also lock something to the right. So let's say I wanted to lock my bass channel to the right, and it's going to send it all the way down to the end of my other fader unit. Uh, one thing I will mention is if you unlink your fader units, I can then lock things to the left or right of just fader units. So let's say I wanted to uh, lock this overhead channel to the right. Now I've got it locked right on this, this side here, and my snare and hi-hat are still locked here. And so you can configure that per fader bank or, or fader unit, rather, or as if they're linked. So that's very handy as well. I'm going to go ahead and unlock these very quickly so that we can move on to the next part here. Okay, uh, we also have event on track. Oh, let's, sorry, I'm going to go back to link here. Um, I can also quickly select uh, channels here and then link them, and that's a fader link. Uh, so that's a quick way to do that. If I held down my control modifier key, I can select various tracks, not in sequential order, and hit link, and now those tracks are linked, uh, their faders are linked. So that's another quick uh, way to do things. And then we also have hide, hide or unhide, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, for example, uh, we mentioned in our previous video that whatever is highlighted up here, it will, if, if I've got all my audio channels highlighted there, it will not show whatever channels have been hidden. And so um, let's say I wanted to hide my piano track here. I've got those linked. I'll go ahead and unlink them. Let's say I wanted to hide that piano track. I click and hold hide down for one second and you notice it goes away. You can see up on the screen here, maybe I'll use my mouse so you can see, that channel has been hidden. If I want to unhide it, I can hit this all channel button and now it pops back up where it was before. So that's a quick way to do that. And there's reasons for doing that. We can cover that in future tutorials if needed. Okay, let's go through these buttons here. We've got an event on track button. So what that does, if you notice in our project here, we have actually created a few tracks here that have no events on them. Uh, audio's thir channels 39 through 44. And so if I hit event on track, you notice I do not see those channels. If I hit all channels again, they pop back up and you can see them right here. So event on track shows only those tracks on your fader unit that have uh, events on them. Event cycle. Uh, you notice in this project I have my left and right locators uh, set in the middle of this project. And so if I click on event cycle, it only shows the tracks that are associated with that in that section, that cycled section. Uh, we also have a playing channel. And so you'll notice in this area here I have Tom 2 and Tom 3. I'll go ahead and hit playing channel. And what playing channel does is whatever, wherever my cursor is over in the project, it will show those uh, those faders on the, or those channels on the fader unit. And so let's say I move over here, you'll notice if, if I click playing channel again, these two channels will go away. And you can see the channels adjusting on these fader units. It's very handy if you're doing post-production where you have a high channel count and you need to see just what is shown what where your cursor is you can quickly pull those channels to you if needed so that's a good thing um, okay then we also have selected channel and I'll demonstrate that let me highlight all my channels and let me again I'm just gonna select a few of these channels here 
in non-sequential order. If I, I have these four selected here, if I hit select a channel, you can now see that I've thrown those to the right there. Let me demo that one more time, and I'm going to unlink these units so you can see it better here. I've got these four channels selected, and if I hit select a channel, now it just pulls them right to this area on my fader unit. And so I can quickly access those by doing that uh, that way. And if I hit it again, then it takes me back out and shows me all of my channels. And then finally, we have expanded channel view, and that is uh, explained best. Let's say I have the snare channel highlighted. If I hit expanded channel view, it shows me every channel that is or every track that is associated with that channel. So if, if the snare drum was going through an effect unit, for example, it would also show that effect channel here. And you can see that it's going out the stereo out. So whatever channel is uh, selected, it will pull that down and uh, show all of those channels all at the same time. That's just a quick overview of these functions. Again, uh, very useful things right at your fingertips. It makes it uh, so, so fun to mix with Nuage. Thanks for watching. Again, as always, if you have questions or suggestions, please email me, brad at polesound.com, and I uh, would love to cover any of those things for you. Thanks again.